Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Amy and this is Thrift Adventure. I'm a full-time reseller primarily on the Poshmark app, but I do dabble on other online platforms and I sell locally. Today I'll be doing another ship with me video. I do these videos every week and I go day to day and I share the different items that I'm shipping out. I talk about how much they sold for, what I paid for them, and what my profit was. So you wanna be sure to watch all the way to the end because I always have interesting and unique items and hopefully you can learn some new things to keep your eyes out for when you're out thrifting. So let's get started. It is Monday, May 18th, and these are sales from over the weekend. The first item that sold is this vintage chunky gold chain by Napier, which is N-A-P, I, -E -R. I don't think you'll be able to see that, uh, but it is a costume jewelry piece and this brand can have some pieces that sell for really high amounts. This necklace sold for $35. That's kind of in the range with what these chunky gold chains typically sell for. I did recently relist this because I had had it listed for a while and uh, because of the mob wife trend. And so I added mob wife to either the title or description. I can't remember which. And I got this offer for, well, she started off by offering me, I think 25 or 30, and we went back and forth and then we settled on this 35. Um, you know, like I said, some of the pieces can sell for higher dollar amounts, some in the hundreds, depending off it, on if it is a really, you know, special piece with, typically if it has rhinestones in it, those seem to sell for a little bit higher price or a considerably higher price. So if you're curious about learning more about that, I would just type in Napier in eBay and then filter to the sold listings and see some of, the, and then you can filter highest to lowest. And then you can see some of the more valuable pieces. Okay, it sold for 35, I paid $3. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $25. I'm happy for that, it did take, happy with that. It did take a little bit of time to sell, uh, but as I said before, I don't mind waiting um, to sell jewelry, but I am, I've been thinking about this and I am going to proclaim this summer, the summer of sales. I am at over 1100 listings in my Poshmark closet right now. And I have not seen that it has made an exponential difference in the amount of sales that I have in comparison to when I had say four or 500 listings. And honestly, I just feel like I have too much stuff right now. So I am going to be trying to continue to accept reasonable offers. Now, if someone offers me less than 50% of my asking price, I may not accept that. I may accept it, uh, but I really would like to move out some old inventory and get more stuff, more new inventory listed and just downsize overall. So if you, you know, my regular viewers, if you see me starting to say, you know, I'm holding off for higher prices. If you could remind me, just say summer of sales in the comments, I would really appreciate it. And uh, you know, if we can just help each other out, that would be great. Okay, so it was men's belts sales this weekend. I sold three men's belts and I sold this one, which I just think is super cool. I loved this copper tone buckle and all of the studded detail. I believe that this was a handmade piece. It sold for $45, which I thought was pretty a pretty good price. I did, I think I had it priced at like 55 or 59, I'm not sure. But it had been listed for a little bit. So when I got this $45 offer, I just decided to go ahead and accept it. I had paid up for this a little bit just because I thought it was so cool. I paid $10 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit 
uh, $27. Did I say I paid $9 for it? I apologize if uh, my energy is a little low or I'm a little distracted. I just got some uh, bad news. My husband's cousin, who I didn't really know very well, but we found out that he passed away and he was only 50 years old. And so it's just really sad, even, you know, if I didn't know him that well. Uh, you know, you just never want to hear that. So anyways, if you could bear with me, I'm sure you guys will. The next item that sold is another men's belt. I picked this up because of the cool Jaguar uh, belt buckle. Just kind of a um, basic belt otherwise. And I don't believe that this was genuine leather. But I just thought that buckle was really cool. You know, it's not for everybody because it is kind of flashy, but some men like flashy stuff. So this sold for $35. I had paid $3 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $22.02. For thinner belts, I use the small flat rate box. And for wider belts, like men's belts, I use this one, which is the 1096L. It is just slightly larger than the small flat rate box. And I think they work really great. Okay, another men's leather belt. And this is Nakona brand. It had this cool kind of uh, woven inlay there. This sold for $39. I don't think this was listed very long. I think I just got this within the last couple of months. I paid about $2 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $26.22. I apologize to my regular viewers, but for those of you who are new here, I love selling belts. I sell belts multiple a week usually, and I look at them like a bread and butter item. So I pick them up all the time. I list them all the time, and I am motivated to accept reasonable offers and, you know, cycle them in and cycle them out. Did I say my profit was $26.22? That is, that's really great. The next item that sold is kind of interesting. It is a vintage Wrangler jean jacket. And you can just tell by the tag that this is vintage. One thing that I notice on vintage items is that a lot of times the size tag is more of like a paper type material. Can you hear that? It's like a stiffer material. And a lot of the newer items um, have like more of a silky type tag. Anyways, this had like a worn in distressed look to it. Like someone, it was someone's favorite leather jacket or denim jacket. And I always like to pick up vintage jean jackets that are like that. I'm not sure if this piece is going to be big enough. So I'll... Uh, do something else. Uh, but this ended up selling for $48, which I, uh, when I picked this up and some shirts that I sold recently, I did some research. I just typed vintage Wrangler into eBay and I looked at the sold listings and I sorted highest to lowest. And uh, vintage Wrangler items can actually sell for some decent prices. So, um, you know, I've passed on Wranglers a lot, and I'm sure they're not all valuable, uh, but it was just really interesting to see that uh, some of it can sell for good money. I paid just a dollar for that at a fill the bag sale, so my profit was $37.40. I am thrilled with that. This next item, I'm irked <laughs> with myself and with. So it is a Patagonia men's. Uh, fleece. I have had this forever, probably over two years. It finally sold for $30. I spent at least 10 minutes before this video uh, lint rolling it, and then I noticed that there's another mark on it. It was already worn and had marks and a bunch of pilling on it. I don't know why I bought it in the first place. Um, 
So I'm going to try and get that other mark out that wasn't clearly uh, pictured. I did say in my description that this had peeling and marks, uh, but I don't feel like that particular mark was accurately depicted in the pictures. So I'm at first I'm going to try and get it out. I'm going to stain treat it and wash it. If it doesn't come out, then I am going to contact the buyer and show them a picture of it and let them know that I'm sorry I missed this. Are they still interested in going through with the purchase? So I always ask the buyer before I cancel an item, even if there is an undisclosed flaw. And honestly, nine times out of 10, people say they still want the item. So I'm telling you this so that you don't just automatically cancel a sale without checking with your buyer first, because a lot of times they'll just still want it. The other thing is, is I don't know if my records were not correct, but I have that I paid $9 for this. So why on earth I paid $9 for a worn out marked up Patagonia coat? I don't know. But if the sale goes through, my profit will be $21. If it doesn't, that's getting donated. I'm done with it. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the next item sold on Cherish, and uh, I have some news about Cherish. I will tell you after I share this. So it is just this fun hand-painted frog, and this is by Andrea, uh, Andrea by Sedek, I think is how it's pronounced, and it does say hand-painted on the bottom. I just picked it up because I thought it was cute. And then also this uh, kind of fishnet, pattern um there is a brand called herend h-e-r-e-n-d that is very very expensive so for those few different reasons that's why i picked it up it sold for 45 dollars i paid four dollars um cherish charges a 22 percent seller's fee that's what i'm going to tell you about here in a minute um, so after their fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $32.20. That's fine. It did take a while to sell, uh, but in general, items on Cherish can take a little bit longer to sell to get higher prices, although I don't think that was a super high price, but I'm happy with it nonetheless. Okay, I also sold a antique real gold ring with a uh, faux ruby in the center. I forgot to bring it with me or, or pick it up from the safe deposit box, but I will um, put a little clip after this to show you what it looks like. It sold for $150. I paid just $6 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $144. I think that is really great. So like I said, it is May 18th and I just found out that Cherish is increasing their seller fees to 30%. So there is a way around that. If you pay uh, a membership fee of $49 a month, then you can keep your 22% seller's fee. I really don't think I would recommend that for people who don't have a whole bunch of listings on there. I just don't think that it is worth it, uh, but that is totally up to you um, if you think it's worth it or not. So the way that I am looking at it is yes, it's annoying. I don't wanna have to pay $49 to pay 22%, which is a very high, the high probably the highest rate in the industry. But they're a business and they are in business to make money. They are, my thought process on why they're doing this is that they are trying to weed out casual sellers and they just want the top cream of the crop sellers who are selling high priced items and are making regular sales. Um, because, you know, the the higher the dollar amount of the sale, the less sales that they have to have to make money, the less customer service that they have to provide. I am going to continue to sell on there. I'm gonna pay the $49 a month and I am either going to increase the amount of items I am listing on there per month so that uh, hopefully my sales increase well, I am going to do that. I am also going to increase my prices on there. I, I think that, you know, things sell for higher prices on there and uh, increasing each, you know, so let's say I do 25 listings per month 
and I increase the listing price $5 per item, that will more than cover the $49 per month. And I really think that they are, you know, trying to pos pos position themselves, spit it out, to be a, um, you know, a higher end selling platform. And another way that I look at this is that, you know, if, if I could be a seller that people view like they view Neiman Marcus or Nordstrom or Chanel or Louis Vuitton, I want to be, I want to be that seller. You know, I don't want to be, uh, a seller who people view as Kmart or Walmart or even Target. I mean, I love Target, but uh, they have, you know, lower prices. So I understand what they're doing and where they're coming from. And, you know, you can either use that to your benefit or you can sell on another platform. Totally up to you. I love Cherish because there's a lot of interior designers that are selling on there. There is a lot of wealthy buyers or buying that are buying on there. I like that they will uh, facilitate the shipping on things. So for me, it's worth it. Or I'm going to test it out and make sure it's still worth it. Uh, also, that, you know, increase in fee and the monthly service charge will likely decrease my competition on there because a lot of people will get mad and they'll just leave. Those are my thoughts. You know, we can get mad about changes and increased costs or we can just try and figure it out and work it out for our business. Uh, we're all trying to make a buck. And that is totally understandable. I would love to hear your guys' feedback uh, in my comments below. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some of the other platforms continuing to raise their prices. I know Etsy's fees have gone up. I, I think eBay's have gone up. And I wouldn't be surprised if Poshmark's go up in the next couple of years. If you enjoy this type of video, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. It just means so much to me. And I am trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. And I really hope you can help me out with that. that. Also, if you could give this video a thumbs up and comment down below, both those things really help me out. They tell the YouTube algorithm that people are enjoying my videos. And so YouTube suggests my videos to more people. Don't go anywhere. I will be back in a jiffy your time, a couple days my time to share what else I sell. Okay, see you then. Okay, here is the ring that sold. Isn't that just a beautiful vintage piece? I loved the cabochon ruby and let's see, can we get it? There we go. And uh, the etched details on the side, just a really beautiful piece. Like I said, this sold for $150. I am thrilled with that. Hey again, it's Tuesday the next day and it is March. It was March 18th, not May 18th. Like I said earlier, twice in the video, I don't know. I am ahead of my months and I don't wanna speed through spring or summer uh, because it is the summer of sales after all. And I got a couple of offers and I said summer of sales, summer of sales, and I accepted them. So if you guys want to do that with me, it seemed, it seemed to work to uh, remind myself that I want to move out some inventory. And after I accepted the offer, I'm like, that is a great offer. I'm, I'm happy. And in general, when I accept offers, rarely do I regret selling items and just getting them out. So fingers crossed, I keep thinking that way. Uh, so I have four sales since I shipped yesterday. The first item is this pretty cool beaded necklace. It has this Thunderbird and then it says Banff, which I think is like uh, Banff National Park maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, but I just thought this was a really cool piece. It did take a really, really long time to sell. Probably over a year, maybe two years. And I think the reasoning was I had it priced too high based on the condition. I don't know if you can see right there, it has some little loose threads, uh, but it sold for $35. I think this was either a full price sale or it was um, someone liked it and my Posher VA sent out a 10% off offer with discounted shipping. I am overthinking this packaging here. 
pardon me while I do that. I had paid $5 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $23. I think that is just fine and I am excited to see this go since it has been listed so long. Oh, something. So I had been buying my craft jewelry boxes at the dollar store. And this last, usually they come with little cotton fillers in there. And this last batch that I got did not include any of the cotton fillers. So they are cutting costs. <laughs> and if you have any suggestions on where to get uh, like wholesale priced craft jewelry boxes like the paper kind uh, please let me know in the comments down below because I think I'm going to look into that uh, I think it's a less expensive option I like to have the jewelry box I just feel like it adds an extra layer of protection and um, let's see I've got to get a box out for that and I just think, you know, if I was buying jewelry online and I got a little gift box with it, with some ribbon, it would make me happy. So I try and uh, do nice things, you know, for my customers. Okay, the next item that sold is this fossil belt. I liked the perforated scallop detail. Kind of had a vintage, like Y2K vibe to it. Uh, it sold for $23. It was an offer that someone made me. I'm pretty sure I have this listed at $39 because in general, that's what I list my belts at unless they are something special. I paid about $3 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $15.40. As you guys know, I like to turn and burn belts and this had been listed for a little while. The next sale is a pretty exciting sale. These sold for full price. These are, the brand is Charix or Cherix. I had never heard of this brand, uh, but when I saw it at the Goodwill, I could just tell that it was a high quality shoe. And so I looked up retail pricing and comps online, and these had good comps. They sold for $89, which was the full price that I had them listed at. So I think that is pretty exciting. I did pay up for these a little bit. I paid $12. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $59.20. I think that's great. Uh, that same day, right next to these, in fact, I found a pair of Jaffa, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, clogs. And I paid $24.99 for those, but they ended up selling, I think, for over $100. So and they were the same size so i kind of think it was the same lady who donated so that turned out to be a very profitable shoe uh, purchase let's see uh i had a box out for those but i think they'll kind of be smushed in there so i'm going to do something different okay so this is the item that i was chanting summer of sales summer of sales to myself and it sold for $50, so I don't know why I even hesitated. Probably because I had it listed for $89. Also, I love this bag. It's been hanging around the shop forever, and I keep thinking that I'm going to take it home and carry it, and I never did, so I finally listed it. It's been listed, I don't know, four or five months or something for $89. And it is a Nordstrom brand, but it, it's vintage. It did have some wear to the interior, overall in nice condition uh, but it was just nice to have that kind of reminder to accept reasonable offers and I think this is a perfectly reasonable offer I had paid five dollars for this so after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $35 that's great 
I would much rather have the $35 than a bag that I am not using. And technically it feels like $50 because I bought this quite a few years ago and I just never listed it. So of course I did take the deduction for that cost of goods in the year that I bought it because I use the cash method of accounting. I'm not an accountant and I can't recommend if that's a good way for you to do it or not. I do recommend that uh, anyone who is reselling and you're making over $600 and now you're going to be getting the 1099, I do recommend that you talk to a uh, CPA for sure uh, because if you are going to be doing this as a business, a lot of people were really upset when they were gonna start sending the 1099s. Uh, I've always reported my income since I started doing this as a business uh, because there are some really great write-off, uh, potential write-offs when you are a small business owner. And sometimes it can make your tax obligation less than it would be if you didn't uh, you know, file your taxes as a business. Again, I'm not an accountant, uh, but that is just something to think about uh, with, you know, having to report your income now. Speaking of that, and of course I didn't write, write it down because I forget, um, but I just finished my taxes for 2023 and my sales on Poshmark were down by about three or four thousand dollars from 2022. But my Cherish sales were up by, I think, six or seven thousand dollars. So overall, my income was up for the year by about five thousand dollars. So that makes me happy. You know, an increase of five thousand dollars in a year is pretty good. Um, well, also part of that was a little bit of that was YouTube income, which I'm still not making a ton of money through YouTube, but a little bit here and there, every little bit helps, which, uh, so I'm excited that I am actually making some income through YouTube. Uh, but I just thought I'd share that with you guys because like I was mentioning earlier in the video, I now have over 1,100 listings on Poshmark. And I think last year I was kind of in the 800 range for most of the year. So I have 300 additional listings and that is not translating to extra sales. So, you know, it may be a good idea to look at other options I'm not, you know, I'm not going to give up Poshmark. I love it. I love the ease of listing. I love the ease of shipping. Let's see, there was something else. Oh, so also about the Cherish fee, monthly fee. So I was thinking eBay also has a so store subscription fee to get a discounted rate. And, you know, as much as people say that the rate the seller fee on eBay is less expensive than Poshmark. When you pencil it all out, in a lot of cases, it is not that much less expensive, maybe one or 2%. So really Poshmark, um, to me, for the ease is, uh, is worth it. However, of course, eBay has so much more traffic, so many more shoppers and uh, buyers than Poshmark does. So you just have to weigh what's important to you and um, how you like to run your business. I like knowing that after three days, the sale is final. I have my money. Nobody can come back in 30 days and, you know, have that money taken back unless they claim an item is not authentic. That's the only time that I've heard of Poshmark, uh, you know, taking back funds. So let me let me know in the comments. Uh, have you did you trans transition from Poshmark to eBay and you really love it a lot more? Am I just a scaredy cat for the returns? I have talked about this before and people have said that they really don't get very many returns on eBay. So I think it's just the fear of the unknown and maybe a little bit of um, I don't know if laziness is the right word, but I just don't really want to handle the figuring out the shipping. You know, like. 
measuring and weighing my packages. I like for Poshmark that I know up to five pounds, any size I can ship. And for most things, I can tell if it's under five pounds and if it's on the edge, then I will weigh it. But that only happens maybe, you know, four or five times a year that I'm shipping a really heavy item. Okay, so I will be back probably on Thursday to Thursday or Friday to share what else I sell. Don't go anywhere. Hi again, it's Friday and I have quite a few sales to ship out. Thank you so much, you guys, for your support. I just published uh, the estate sale haul where I spent $890 and I offered a sale price and uh, two of you took advantage of it and you ordered four items each. I'm so very thankful. Uh, so I'll start with those. Uh, the first bundle is for Alexandra and she picked up these really cool uh, vintage or not vintage, sorry, Southwest style earrings. And these are a certain designer, which I did find out and I had the name in my listing and I have since forgot. Uh, I am terrible with that. I need to be better about writing that stuff down. You know, actually, I think I'm gonna package this all up off camera. And the next item she got was another pair of earrings. These are a fun silver teardrop uh, with turquoise inset earrings. I really liked those. And then this wonderful Murano glass uh, watch and it has this Millefiori trim. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I thought, just thought this was a really cool piece. And then she also got this really fun boho kind of gypsy style patchwork bag. It has all this cool old looking fabric and little mirrors and then little bells. Just a super cool piece. I got this at a, a recent filled bag haul. So she uh, added all the items to a bundle and got half off two of the items so her total was 172 dollars i paid a total of ten dollars for everything which i feel a little guilty sharing uh my profits and things when it's you guys purchasing um, but you guys do know that a lot of work goes into this and hopefully you understand so i paid three dollars for the watch three dollars for the designer earrings the turquoise earrings i got in another haul of jewelry that i didn't have time to share i paid three dollars per item for that and then the purse uh, for the fill that bags the bag sale my average cost of goods for that ended up being a dollar a piece so it came out to ten dollars total after posh fees my cost of goods and i gave her a shipping discount my total profit was 125 dollars and 58 cents so Thank you so very, very much. Uh, Alexandra has bought many things from me in the past and I'm just so thankful for all of your guys' support. Uh, it just really means a lot to me uh, because, uh, you know, I, I, it just does. And I have bills to pay like everyone else. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and package that up off camera. Okay, the next bundle was also a subscriber and i'll start out with she also got four items and thank you so much lourdes i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing your name uh, for your purchase so the first item that she got is one of the patricia nash uh, big satchel bags isn't that pretty this was new with tags and it comes with a long crossbody strap and the dust bag so she got that and then she got this really cute little sterling silver ring with uh, amethyst and then some sort of pink gemstone. Those were both from that recent haul that I featured. Then she picked out this really uh, cute little turquoise and um, it's sterling silver but it has a gold uh, plating. She picked that out. I'd had that for quite some time. And then this darling little turtle brooch. I'd also had this for quite some time. So I gave her a little bit extra discount uh, because a couple of the items 
were older inventory and I was excited to sell those. So her bundle ended up coming to $162 after the discounts. I had paid about $22, so $15 for the purse, $3 for the ring, and then like one to $3 each for the other items. So after Posh Fees, my cost of goods, and I also gave her a shipping discount, my profit was $105.58. Another wonderful sale I'm super excited about. I appreciate you guys so much, not just the purchases, uh, but you were all so excited and enthusiastic with me in the comments of my haul. And uh, that's just makes it even more fun and exciting for me. Okay, so the next item that sold is pretty a pretty exciting sale. It is this vintage Tasco bracelet, and uh, that is spelled T-A-X-C-O. And this is sterling silver. It's from Mexico. This has a uh, maker's mark and designer mark on the inside there. And I did some research uh, to find out who the artist was, and uh, I was able to include that in the description. I thought this was a really cool piece and I considered keeping it, but it was just a little bit too big for me, even though I could have kind of squished it down. I just never reached for it. So this sold for $185. It took a long time to sell, maybe close to two years. I had it priced high because there were some high comps for this designer and I just, Frankly, I just did not want to sell it unless I could get a great price for it because I just thought it was a really unique, special piece. I had bought, uh, gotten this in a large haul of jewelry that was a bad buy. That, that was one of the other reasons I was holding out for a uh, good price. So story time. <laughs> I went to an estate sale and I had been kind of the only game in town for jewelry at estate sales for a while. And then this gal started coming over from another city that's about an hour away and she was getting there and getting all the jewelry before I could get it. And so in my haste and poor judgment, I uh, at an estate sale, I just went up and there was a ton of jewelry and I just said, I'll take it all. Without looking through it, um, all the things. I have a phone call coming through. I'm gonna go ahead and, okay, sorry about that. Somehow I turned off the video, but I said, I'll take it all. And uh, so they gathered it all up and added it all up and it was like over $600. And I, it was the same estate sale company before uh, at this time, they were pricing their jewelry even cheaper, like a dollar or two dollars typically. Uh, but there was way more than I thought there was. And when she said six hundred dollars, I was like, oh, my gosh. And then I felt terrible because I had said, I'll take it all. And so I said, I'm really sorry. You know, I know it's the first day. Is there any way that you can do a better price? And uh, she was very kind about it and I learned my lesson. She did give me a discount. I am a shopper every week at her sales. And I said, I promise I'll never do this again. And she said, it's totally fine. It's better for me uh, to just get it all out anyways. So anyways, it was a terrible buy uh, because although I got a lot of pieces, most of them were really junky. They were like you know, under $15 items, but there was a couple really good pieces. This was one of them. So anyways, you know, I, I learn as time goes on, sometimes I get aggressive and anxious and I have to take a step back and remind myself that nothing is worth, you know, being icky and, um, being aggressive. And, uh, I just have to learn things sometimes over and over again. Anyways, I'm glad that this sold for $185. Uh, I put my cost of goods as $10 on this. With the number of items, it ended up being like $2 per item. Uh, but there's just some things that I don't know if I'll ever sell. Anyways, so my profit after posh fees and cost of goods was $138.
And like I said, I will never do that again and say that I'll take it all without actually looking through piece by piece. Okay, the next item that sold was another piece from the recent big jewelry haul. I don't know if this is uh, one of you guys that's a viewer, but it's this, this really cool uh, semi-vintage kind of filigree ring with a black onyx and then a teeny tiny diamond in the center. I thought that was really cute. So if it is one of you that's a viewer, thank you so much, Laura, for shopping with me. The reason that I think it might be a viewer is because, you know, it sold right after I published that video, but it also hadn't been listed too terribly long. So it sold for $46. I think the buyer liked this and I sent them a 10% off offer with discounted shipping, which would have been the $46. I paid $3 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $30.82. They have stopped making my other little plastic boxes that I used to get at the dollar st store, or at least they're not, um, my store isn't getting them anymore. So I'm gonna have to find some alternatives and I've been procrastinating on reordering supplies. So I need to get my um, Heinean gear, but it is good to use up some of the older things that I kind of been hanging on to. Uh, before I spend money on other things. So I hope this person doesn't mind this cute little box. Hopefully they can reuse it. Okay. So the next item that sold is this cute little uh, cloisonne ring. It is blue cloisonne with pink like cherry blossom flowers on it. It's a band ring. This sold for $15. I didn't expect it to sell for a whole lot. And to be honest, it's probably not something I would have picked up unless it was very affordable because although I love cloisonne, it just doesn't always sell very well or for very much for me. Um, so did, did I say someone gave it to me? So my cost of goods was zero. Uh, after posh fees, it was my profit was $12. The next item that sold is just a plain little sterling silver band ring. And to be honest with you, I was surprised at how much, how many likes and whatnot that I got for this plain silver band. Again, this is something that I wouldn't normally pick up on its own, uh, but it was part of a large lot of sterling silver jewelry that I got. And so when I, when someone brings in a large lot of jewelry, typically I just, you know, look through it real quickly, pick out the key uh, higher dollar pieces, and then make an offer on the entire lot and just take it all. Um, so this cost me $3. It sold for $26 for a plain silver band ring. I'm just really surprised. Uh, about that. I think that I had it priced at $29 and they liked it and got the 10% off. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $17.80. So I guess maybe consider picking up some of those plain band rings if you um, see them for really cheap. Okay, the next item is just this beaded orange stone necklace. And I bought this years and years ago at a, let's see, it's like a flea market. It was the Fremont Sunday Market in Seattle. It looks like I'm gonna need a bigger piece of um, bubble wrap for this, but it was kind of an impulse buy. I didn't buy it for resale. I just thought it was cool. I don't, yeah, I don't know. So it sold for $17. I don't remember what I paid for it, uh, but I would assume somewhere around $5. So I put that as my cost of goods. So not a big profit, but my profit was $8.60 on that. It was just something that was kind of uh, sitting in my jewelry box at home. And when I went through that a little while ago, I just decided to list it. 
Okay, so the next sale is a bundle of three men's belts. I apologize if the lighting's changing. I had to film later today because my lawn mowing guy came when I was gonna film and so it kind of messed up my schedule. But this belt bundle sold before my video came out so I don't think it has anything to do with that, but I'm happy about it. The bundle sold for $75. And the first item is just this black leather belt in very nice condition with the double buckle. I, I like to pick these up when I find them. It seems like people like this style and I think there might be a name for it. I can't remember offhand, but I do always, you know, try and include in the title or description that it has a uh, double buckle. So I paid on average $3 a piece for these belts. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $48.98. So I'm going to just package this one belt here and then finish up the other ones off camera. The other belt is this cool tooled western style belt. This didn't have a brand name on it and it did not include a buckle. It was just for the belt only but I picked it up just because I thought that was a unique style and um, like I've said I do well with all kind of belts even if they don't have buckles. And then the last item was, or is this black kind of woven leather Nike belt. And I do well with black belts. And because this was Nike, I decided to pick it up also. So that was a really nice little bundle. I haven't, I don't feel like I've been selling as many belts, but maybe I'm being forgetful with everything else. So only one piece of clothing over the last two or three days. I didn't really, uh, you know, notate, but I have not been selling as much clothing. And I do find this really interesting that when I list more of a certain type of item, I sell more of that type of item. So lots of jewelry and all I've been listing over the last week or two is jewelry. And so I think it somehow has to do with the algorithm or the search function or whatever that it, it tends to, um, if you're listing a certain kind of item, it tends to push that certain kind of item, the other items you have available. Sorry, I'm not articulating that very well. Um, but anyways, I'm happy. I have a lot of jewelry to sell, so that is exciting. Okay, so the next item is the semi-vintage Levi's jean shorts, and they are a kind of longer length. These are 505s, and I do believe that they, well, yeah, they're men's. These took forever to sell. I don't, I don't really know. Maybe close to two years. And it's interesting, I had another pair, a women's pair of vintage, vintage Levi's jean shorts and they just sold within the last month too so maybe the trends are changing and these you know are all of a sudden people want them maybe i had them priced too high to begin with these sold for 28 dollars. so after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit 19 dollars and 40 cents so this video will come out after the fact, but I am going to head to uh, Phoenix, Arizona next week. I'm pretty excited. I'm going on Monday. My husband has uh, some training for work. So our uh, hotel and rental car are paid for. So all I had to pay for was the flight. And I'm gonna do some thrift shopping. The weather's looking a little iffy, but I'm hopeful I'm hoping I'll get a couple of pool days. Then I'm gonna hit up some estate sales. So you know, of course, I'm gonna have hopefully at least two videos uh, from the thrifting there. And I am going to have to be very selective because I only want to do one additional, check one additional large suitcase. 
Number one, it costs extra to check. Number two, I do not need any inv inventory. So this will really be for fun and for the purposes of a video. Okay, so it is Friday. If I have any more sales, I will ship again tomorrow because we're flying out midday on Monday and the less that I have to film and ship out that day, the better. Oh, I will be turning my closet off for at least Monday, maybe Monday and Tuesday. When I am gone for a longer period of time, if I can ship within five days, uh, then I will just leave my closet open. I know I have seven days, but I think most people would be upset if I really waited the full seven days. And how I do it is when I turn my closet back on, if I have an offer or a purchase, I always notify the buyer and let them know, hey, I'm out of town, uh, but these will ship on this date. Are you okay with that? I have never had anyone say, no, I'm not okay with that, cancel my order. I think most buyers, as long as you communicate with them, they are okay with a delay in shipping. I also um, add a listing to my closet saying, you know, I'm out of town, orders will ship this day. And then I also change the main picture on my Meet the pos Posher page to a notice that says, I'm out of town, all orders will ship this day. So if anybody, you know, places an order and then is wondering why it didn't ship or they don't read my message, if they click on my Meet the Posture page, it says it right there. So I really try and be as transparent with people as possible. And like I said, I've never had a problem. <laughs> so hopefully I don't this time. Okay, don't go anywhere. Hopefully I'll have some more sales to share with you tomorrow. It's Saturday and I just have one more thing to ship out, but I am thankful for the sales that I have had this week. It is this uh, faux snakeskin print bag from Aldo and it has these really fun bright colors. It is new with tags. I picked this up at a, a fill the bag sale not too long ago and actually when I after I got it and I took it out of the bag when I got home, I was kind of disappointed because I didn't think Aldo uh, had very good values, but this ended up selling for $37, which I think is pretty great. I think I looked it up and the retail was somewhere around 50 to 60. So I, I don't usually get that great of prices even for new with tags items. I was going to see, yeah, it doesn't say how much it is on the tag, but Anyways, my average cost of goods was only a dollar for that fill the bag sale. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $28.60. I'm happy with that. Hey there, it's Sunday evening and I was going to stop the video as of yesterday, Saturday, but I had five more sales. And one thing in particular that I wanted to share with you that I'm kind of excited about. Um, so I decided to do, well, it's this little uh, Kurt Geiger credit card clutch bag and it comes with a um, long crossbody strap too. But the reason I wanted to share this with you was because I decided to dabble a little bit with retail arbitrage and uh, this was one of the things that I bought. So I've been <laughs> kind of obsessed with this brand recently because I love birds, as you all know, and their like logo is this really cool little eagle bird head. And I just thought this bag was so cool. So I saw this and I really wanted it for myself, self, but I knew that it was not a practical bag. So I waited and hoped that it went on sale. And I think it started out priced at like $195 and they kept reducing it and they reduced it to $60. So I ordered myself one to take a look at, you know, the size and the craftsmanship and I loved it. I just think it's so much fun. You know, it says unlimited funds on there and it looks like a credit card. I'm sure I will not use this bag very often, but sometimes you just get things that bring you delight and this is one of those things. So when I saw that it was so cool, I ordered a second one because I figured uh, that someone else would be kicking themselves for not buying this and it's a limited edition. 
And so I got this for $60 plus tax, which was $66. I listed it, I think for a hundred or 229, maybe, um, maybe 199. I can't remember for sure, but I got an offer for $169 and I had only had it listed for less than two weeks. Uh, so like I said, I paid 60 plus tax, which was $66. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $69.20, which basically pays for the one of these that I kept. So I have done that in the past kind of here and there when something is a really good deal. And then this year I just decided I'm going to try it and see if I can um, make some money doing it. And so I there's another piece here that's similar. So then they had the keychains that are the same, marked down to $15. So I ordered myself one at the same time that I ordered the clutch bag. And then after I got it, I ordered three more of these. And I was thinking about giving um, them to some friends of mine that are twins for their birthday, but then I showed them that ba bag and they didn't seem to think it was as cool as I did, so I decided to sell them. Anyways, I listed this a little over two weeks ago and it's just a little bag charm or keychain and it sold today for $35. So I didn't double my money on this. Um, it ended up being $15 plus tax, so about $16 uh, after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $12. But I still have two more of these and I think that I'm not going, I listed it for 50. I think that I'm not going to um, accept as low of, low of an offer on the other ones that I have. But I just thought you guys might be interested um, in that experiment. I also ordered a couple of pieces off um, Nordstrom Rack of Kurt Geiger because uh, they, sell discount his discontinued discounted pieces sorry um neither of those have sold though and i paid a little bit more for those so we'll see uh if it's works out to be a good idea or not and you know if worse comes to worse i can just sell them and get my money back and just chalk it up to a learning experience uh, but i thought it was kind of fun Okay, so the next item that sold is another pair of the Birkenstocks from that giant $890 thrift haul. I think I have almost made my money back on that. Maybe maybe I have $100 or $150 more to go, but these sold for $66. I just wasn't sure. You know, when you put out that amount of money, it's going to make you nervous. <laughs> it would make anybody nervous. Well, I guess maybe not some super wealthy person that $890 is a drop in the bucket too. But anyways, I'm really excited at uh, how it has turned out and how quickly I have been able to kind of recoup a good portion of what I spent. And now... I mean, all this jewelry, I've only sold two of the handbags, I think, almost all of the shoes. I think there's only two pairs of shoes left, but then almost 90% of the jewelry is left. So if I have recouped my investment and I have all of that stuff left that is just profit, that is really, really exciting. Okay, so they sold for $66.00. Uh, these were $5 a piece at that estate sale. If you haven't watched that video, I'll try and remember to uh, link it in the description box below because it was super exciting. Uh, so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $45.78. I think that is great. These were um, new or like new. I'm pretty sure these were new without box and tags. So for these, I am using the medium flat rate box and um, I will just add some more uh, padding in there so they don't rustle around. 
Okay, sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. We are leaving early tomorrow to go out of town, and so my mind's kind of uh, reeling. So anyway, sorry to be vain there. Uh, the next item that sold is this cashmere Tesori, I think that's how you say it, uh, cardigan sweater. Now, this was something that I was chanting to myself, summer of sales, summer of sales, <laughs> when I accepted the offer because it only sold for $28 and I um, and it's new with tags. So, you know, definitely or potentially I could have gotten more for this, but it is getting to be the end of March now or close to the end of March. And so I don't think I need to be hanging on to cashmere sweaters all through the hot summer. So that sold for $28. I paid $6 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $16.40. Still a just fine profit. I'm not gonna complain at all. The next item is this San Francisco sweatshirt. Now this isn't necessarily something that I would normally pick up, but it seemed kind of vintage and it was really nice thick quality and it looked like it had never been washed maybe never been worn so that's why i picked it up and so you know some of these uh spell out sweatshirts can be kind of trendy right now this sold for 25 dollars. i paid two so after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit 18 dollars so uh, overall, I'm really happy with this week. Um, so if the transition from the last clip to this clip is weird, uh, sorry about that because I'm gonna clip off the end of that where I shared my total sales for the week because I'm adding $323 to that in the last 24 hours. So that's super exciting. Okay, so my total sales for the week were $1,710. That's actually for eight days, Saturday to Sunday, but you get it. My total cost of goods was $224 and my total profit after um, website fees, shipping discounts, and cost of goods was $1,164.18. I'm happy with that. I am going to turn my Poshmark closet off for about uh, 24 hours. Uh, just because while I'm traveling and I don't want to go the full seven days without shipping. So it'll be five or six days uh, before I can ship again. But I'm okay with that. I'll just communicate with my customers if I haven't already said that in the last clip um, and let them know and give them the option to cancel if they don't want to wait. So thank you so very, very much for watching. And as always, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And also give this video a thumbs up. Okay, I'll see you guys all again soon. And hopefully I'll be all tan and refreshed uh, when I get back. <laughs>